You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering dental implants. If you are missing one tooth, and especially if you have a loose-fitting denture, my advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering dental implants. My first guest is an expert on the topic, board certified oral and maxillofacial surgeon, Dr. William Dobbin. Dr. Dobbin, welcome to the program. Thanks, Randy. Now, before we get into today's topic, tell me a little bit about your practice. What kind of patients do you see? Well, as an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, I treat various conditions of the mouth and face. Okay. My typical day in the office consists of removing impacted wisdom teeth and placing dental implants. I also rebuild the bones of the f and soft tissues of the jaws to accommodate dental implants. Okay. Then there's the other part of my practice, which is hospital-based, where I do orthodontic surgery to improve a patient's bite. Which hospital? Elliott Hospital in Manchester. Okay. okay. Do cleft lip and palate surgery and treat facial injuries. The cleft lip and palate. Uh... I understand you go to South America a couple times a year. Yes, that's true. And what do you do there? Do cleft lip and palate surgery on the indigent. Just volunteer a couple, like a couple weeks out of the year? Usually about three weeks a year. Okay. Now, oral maxillo, and, I, and tell me if I'm pronouncing this right, maxillofacial surgeon. Uh, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, what, uh, what area of dentistry is that? Well, we treat all different deformities of the head and neck area. Okay. So anything from a patient that has cancer to... So anything having to do with bone? Is it more about the bone? It's bone and soft tissues of the okay. face. Okay. So as an oral maxillofacial surgeon, you're the one that does the surgery, places the implants. Yes, I place the implant and then the restorative dentist places the prosthesis on top, whether that be a seems crown. seems very painful, by the way, the, the thought of an implant going into the, the bone. Really, it's not at all. So they don't complain about pain? No, the bone really doesn't have any sensation whatsoever. It's really the oh, soft interesting. tissue. Oh, interesting, okay. So if you minimize the trauma to the soft tissue, the patient has little to no pain. Okay, now what's changed over the last 20 years? Because you say a lot has changed in 20 years uh, in regard to dental implants. One of the big advances is that they've changed the texture of the implant okay. so that the total treatment time is greatly reduced. How, how so? I mean, you know, the design of that implant, how does the it... The bone takes to the implant a lot quicker, so it only usually takes about six weeks for that implant to take to the bone, whereas before it used to be six months to a year. Imaging has changed greatly in planting dental implants. Now with the use of the iCAT X-ray... That's a CT the, scan? It's a CT scan that's done in the office. So that's in your office? It's in my office. Okay. And the advantages for the patient is it takes a lot less time, it's less costly, and there's a lot less radiation than the CT scan done in the hospital. Now you say it, it used to be almost like a blind procedure to find bone. Is you that a fair statement? Yes, because you used to work off of a model to plan your surgery and looking at two-dimensional x-rays. Now, in using the CT scan that we have in the office, I can plan the surgery on the computer with special software so it simulates the surgery. And utilizing that, I send that data to the lab and the lab makes a surgical splint. So it's actually a surgical guide so that there isn't any guesswork done in the procedure whatsoever. So what you see on the computer, you've planned, is actually what you get in the mouth. So there's less trauma to the patient. You don't have to raise big flaps of tissue. It's right on the money. You don't have to worry about endangering All any right. adjacent anatomic structures. When I see, you know, anticipating this interview, when I see information on the, uh, on the web about, you know, get a fixed set of teeth in one appointment, is that, I mean, is that possible? Oh, it definitely is possible with the advent of the CT scanning and the computer software that we have right nowadays. So a denture wearer could go in, if they have a CT scan, plan the surgery, give them a fixed set of teeth in one, in one appointment. Within an one, hour. Within an hour. Within an hour. Because when I read that, it seems like an exaggeration. No, it's are, not. Are there a lot of misconceptions in the world of dental implants? And, and if so, what are they? What do you hear? They're painful, for one. As the, I alluded to before, they don't have to be painful if you minimize the soft tissue trauma. Two, they take a long time. They can be loaded right away with the type of treatment that we have. They're very expensive. They don't have to be. You don't need an implant to replace every tooth in the mouth. You can place two implants to stabilize a denture. What about age? You know, my mother, you know, we're talking about, I said, hey, look, I'm interviewing a, a, a doctor about uh, dental implants. And she's 73. She says she's too old and uh, that they would fall out. And we talked on the phone, of course, and you said that, no, that's not the case. No, age is not a indication whatsoever. I've done patients in their 90s. Really? Now, why would a 90-year-old want to 
It's get quality them of in life place. issue. Okay, okay. They're dissatisfied with their denture. They can't chew, they can't speak, they can't laugh, they can't sing, they can't kiss without fear of that denture being moved. Now you say uh, that you're changing people's lives with dental implants. I mean, with, do you hear that? Oh, without a doubt. With a minor surgical procedure, I can change a patient's life dramatically. What do they tell you? I mean, did they tell you that after the procedure? They well, they tell me before their, the problems that they have in wearing a denture. Like? They can't chew their food. They can't speak. They can't laugh, sing, kiss without fear of that denture. So is that fear? I mean, they tell you that, that, that the fear that it's going to come out is, uh, is very common? Oh, it's very, very real. And all of a sudden, you give them a prosthesis that's fixed in their mouth so they can chew whatever they want. What's that going to do? Their diet's going to improve, their health is going to improve. So they avoid certain foods when they're wearing a denture? Well, they mince up their food or they go on a liquid diet. Now, if it's as good as you say it is, uh, getting dental implants over dentures, why isn't everybody doing it? On the internet, it says 15 million people either have an upper or lower denture. Most people don't know about they it. They just don't know, really. Okay. People are fearful of it. They're misinformed. They're not informed. So the biggest fear is the pain. Without what a do doubt. They, I mean, what do they take on the, uh, on the way home? Do you give them an ibuprofen? What do you give them? I always give an narcotic, but oftentimes they only need an ibuprofen. So what are the different categories of dental implant patients that you see? Well, you have a patient that's missing one tooth, or you have a patient that's about to miss one or more teeth. You have patients with old failing dentistry in the mouth, whether it be in the front of the mouth or in the back of the mouth. Right. You have a patient that they've seen their dentist and the dentist has said... Teeth have to go. They have to go. So and it's they dentures need or dental implants. All right. And there's the old denture wearer that's dissatisfied with the fit of their denture. And there are patients that have had dentures for many, many years, and they're very dissatisfied with their denture. Let's talk about the one tooth. I mean, why uh, get a dental implant? What's your case for why a dental implant over uh, just what's traditionally done in dentistry for missing one tooth? Well, traditionally, a bridge is what's placed, and that means where they have to shave down the adjacent crowns on both teeth. Okay. With a dental implant, you don't have to do that, so you're saving tooth structure. Two, with a dental implant, you're preserving the bone. When you lose the root of a tooth, the bone resorbs or wears away. With a dental implant, that won't happen. So if the bone's going away, do the rest of the teeth get loose? They cave in around that missing spot? I mean, could that potentially happen? That could potentially happen, plus the aesthetic result is really bad, because if you have a bridge where the the lost tooth is kind of resting on the gums initially, and all of a sudden the bone resorbs away, away underneath it, the aesthetic result isn't going to be there. The longevity of an implant is far superior to that of a traditional bridge as done in the United States. The median age of a bridge in the U.S. is only seven years, 50 percent more, 50 percent okay. less, whereas an implant can be 40 plus years. I mean, can it last? So it can last as, uh, I mean, forever, really? Forever. I mean, forever. So there's, I mean, implants out there that have lasted 40 years. It's definitely true. So when I hear they fall out, because I was talking to a doctor about this, a medical doctor, and he says, I don't know, I think they fall out. I mean, that's just not the case? That's not the case if they're done correctly, and right. if they're loaded correctly, if the restorative dentist does a good job, and also if the patient takes care of it. Okay, so is it less expensive, though, in, in, in many cases, with, with everything that's done to save a tooth in dentistry? You know, root canal, failed root canal. Is, is it less, especially on the single tooth? I mean, could it be less to just give them their tooth back with a dental implant? It could be less for the long run because you're not, you don't have to replace the existing structure over and over and over again. Okay, now what about people that are missing like three and four teeth? You say this is a big part of uh, the, the people that could benefit the most from dental implants. Without a doubt. What, what do they have as an alternative to do another bridge where they have to shave down several teeth or have a removable denture, which as we all know in the clinical field of dentistry, that loosens the adjacent teeth. Okay. So by placing these root form implants in the jaws, you're stabilizing the bone level and you're not jeopardizing adjacent teeth. Now, of all the people, I mean, millions of people with dentures, I mean, it starts somewhere. I mean, are these people headed for that kind of disaster, as they say, if they're missing three and four teeth in the back of their mouth? I mean, does it usually lead to just, you know, more and more? Without a doubt. So there's science behind that. I mean, statistical information. Oh, without a doubt. That. Without a doubt. Because teeth will eventually fail underneath the bridge. As I said before, the median age is only seven years. You get recurrent decay, you get periodontal disease. If you have a removable partial, it rocks the teeth out of the mouth. 
So they do march towards dentures. So the denture wear. That probably is the group that we can help the most. I mean, do they hate it? I mean, do you hear that they hate it? Because I know people with dentures and I don't hear any complaints from them. I mean, I, I mean, are all for the most part denture wearers unhappy with their situation? I think if you if they were really honest with you and with themselves, they don't. Nobody wants to really lose their okay. teeth. Okay. Let's go through the different options. Then we're going to take a quick break. We come back. The different options, and you brought some models. Uh, the different options that uh, denture wearers have. Uh, I guess from as little as two dental implants. Correct. Something snap in, snap out. Okay. So we'll talk about that. Also the process. Uh, what somebody can expect on day one of the process. You're watching The Wellness Era, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Up next, if you are a denture wearer, what you need to know. We'll be right back. Designs for Health is the nutritional supplement brand of choice, exclusively recommended by healthcare professionals. As a physician, I insist on the science-first approach of Designs for Health. They have synergistic formulations with optimum quantities of therapeutic nutrients. Designs for Health, the leader in professional brand nutritional supplements. There's a new secret to looking younger. An advancement so profound, it took a team of scientists years to create. A time machine called Zoom. Getting Zoomed is the fastest way to erase years from your looks. Zoom is the most advanced teeth whitening ever. Only your dentist has it. Nothing works like it. Zoom Gel gently penetrates the submicron pores of tooth enamel. The patented Zoom Light super activates the gel through a unique photofenton reaction, breaking down the stain's double bonds. In just 45 minutes, years of discoloration disappear, transforming your smile to wow. To find a Zoom dentist near you, go to zoomnow.com or call 800-891-4895. For your whitest, most confident, most irresistible smile, get Zoomed today. Make your appointment at zoomnow.com or call 800-891-4895 today and discover the wow of Zoom. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about dental implants. With us, we have board-certified oral and maxillofacial surgeon, an expert on the topic, Dr. William Dobbin. So the denture wears, their options. You brought some models. What are we looking at over there? Yes, I brought two different types of prostheses that the patient can have that has a, is going to have dental implants. Okay. And You're having a tough time getting that off there. Was that... Uh, you did that for show or is no, that's not for show, that's the All way right. it is. Right. This is a patient that is going to have two dental implants to support an overdenture. Okay. It's not the ideal form of treatment, but it really can make a big change in a patient's life. Okay, so this right here, okay, so this is this is actually have a very tight by the way. So two dental implants. This is a lower jaw? Yes, that is. And you just put uh, little fastens right. right there. Can you use their existing denture? Yes, you can if the denture fit is good. All right, and then and just snaps in and snaps out. Exactly. Okay. So that gives them stability when they eat. I mean, could they talk. eat uh, like corn on the cob with that? Oh, could sure, without you? a doubt. And is this for just lower we're talking about? No, you can do that? it for the top, but more often it's for the lower jaw because with the upper jaw, patients don't have as much of a problem, and if they're going to go for the upper jaw, they're usually looking for more implants. Now, we talked at the break, and you say if there was a try-in period for denture wearers out there where they could just get something like that, they couldn't go back. I mean, you believe that? Oh, I believe that. And I believe that this takes a patient who's a dental cripple and it changes their life completely. Is this one of those things where they say, you know, one of those procedures, I should say, that where they say, I should have done this years ago? Without a doubt, Randy, because you definitely change a patient's life with this. You can't believe how frustrated people are with full dentures. Now, with two implants in the mouth, you can secure the denture so it doesn't move when they chew, so they can eat what they want. So snap in, snap out. That's kind of an entry level. Do they have to use the dental glue with that? Or no, no, they that's, don't. That's gone. That, that's gone, no. And they can taste their food better because they're not mincing up their meals. They're not on a liquid diet. So anymore. it doesn't cost any more to go to a specialist, or does it? No, it doesn't cost any more whatsoever. So people really should go to a specialist because I mean, people always ask me. You know, our show airs nationwide. They say, Randy, you know, what should I look for in this? Whether it's a plastic surgeon or whatever it is, a knee surgeon. I say, look for a specialist, somebody that this is what they do. Because I mean, they, is that your feeling too? Yes, without a doubt, because that's what we do all the time. We do surgery, and if you do a lot of dental implants, you're going to get better. As with any type of surgery, the more you do, the, the more better you become. Better you become. So you have a CT scanner in your office, and I guess that's not common. 
No, it isn't. Not for the private practitioner. But I did it just to ensure the accuracy of my surgery, to decrease the trauma to the patients, and to, for the safety of the patients, so I wouldn't endanger any adjacent So it's very anatomics. accurate and precise now. Is that right? I mean, you, could, you, you say you could put it in an implant without even a flap. Is that right? That's I mean, done without all the time. Without sutures or stitches. That, that's definitely true. Because once I get that data from the CT scan, I put it on a computer, and using special software, I simulate the surgery on the computer. So you do the surgery, uh, you say you could do the surgery before the surgery. Yes, because Elaborate I on that. What, I mean, help me understand that. Well, traditionally, when we used to do the implant surgery, we used to work with a model and plan it on the model and then looking at two-dimensional x-rays. But you, with a CT scan, it gives me three-dimensional images. Then we take that data from the CT scan, merge it with software, and on the computer, I simulate the surgery and plan the surgery. And then what I do is I send that data from the planned surgery on the computer, send that to the lab, and the lab constructs for me a surgical guide. So the surgical guide. Yes, I have one right okay. here. And the beauty of this is the accuracy, because what I've done on the computer is exactly what the patient is going to get. And this is fairly new? I mean, last five years Within type about stuff? the past, past five years, yes. Okay. Now, when I talk to denture wearers, knowing that you are going to come on the show, they think, it, you know, of course, that they're too old, that it's very painful. Uh, so so, so this, this is because of the imaging and because of what you're doing, it's, it's nothing to be afraid of then. No, it isn't anything to be afraid of. And you can plan to the nth degree with this, as I stated before. The tissue trauma is minimal, and you can actually plan the procedure so that at the time of the placement of the implants, the final prosthesis or a temporary prosthesis is placed. Okay, now I've uh, also heard that, uh, that after a surgery, a patient can bite into an apple. That is correct. And, and, and they're that solid. So this is more we're talking about the denture wear that goes in for something fixed can bite into an apple. That's definitely that true. That is amazing. Oh, it is amazing. You can change a patient's life dramatically. So what's the next level up? Okay, so two implants gives you something snaps in, snaps out. What's the next level up? The next level up is to place four to eight implants to secure an appliance that does not move in or out of your mouth. I mean, isn't that what everybody wants, I guess? teeth that don't have to come out? That's what I would want if I didn't have any teeth. All right, all right. Because your function is unlimited. You can chew whatever you want. You never have to worry about taking your teeth out at night to soak them overnight in a denture cleanser or leave them out as most dentists will recommend to the patient. It's not too sexy for your partner. It doesn't really build your self-esteem. Do they tell you that though? That they're oh. insecure? You know, I mean, 60's young today. A lot of these people with dentures uh, keep it a secret. Oh, they sure they do. I have a patient who's a 60-year-old female who had no bone. Everybody told her she couldn't have dental implants. We did the scan. We planned for it. We placed six implants in the, in the mouth. We did an immediate prosthesis, and you take a patient who's had dent, an upper denture for, since the age of 14. That's 46 really? years and changed her life dramatically. And this is a young 60-year-old. So, like, so is it like having your teeth back? I mean, does it feel, I mean, to them, do they? Without a doubt. It's, it's restoring somebody's youth and confidence. It's a dramatic change on a relatively minor surgical procedure. But isn't the upper, I mean, you do this on the upper as well, right? Yes, I sure do. Okay, but isn't the, the upper fine? I mean, the, it's, it's snug? The upper denture is more secure, but you also have that palatal coverage. So their okay. taste is not there. It's a big, bulky prosthesis. And also, the longer a patient wears a denture, the more resorption or wearing away of the bone you get. So As their a, mouth starts to sink in, they get an older look. Definitely, because the jaws weren't made to undergo these compresses, compressive forces from a denture. The lady I just talked to you about, she had no bone. Her denture was resting on her nasal spine, which is the bone right here. So how here. did you do it? I mean, how do you do it with somebody that's been in dentures 45 years? Would you have to add bone in her particular case? In her case, I didn't because really? with the advent of the CT scanning and the software, we were able to plan to place implants where previously I wouldn't know that there was bone. So people that are, t that are thinking, uh, you know, like my mother, 73 years old, I'm too old. I don't have enough bone because she's been in dentures since she was 28. She's 73 now. Usually you can find bone. There's always enough bone? There, de there definitely is. There definitely is. There, there are some rare circumstances where there aren't, but that's a rarity. I mean, I've done patients in their 90s. 90s? 
Aren't they afraid of the process? No, they want results. So the 90-year-olds, 80-year-olds, what's the oldest person that you've heard out there in, uh, that's had a dental implant done? For me, it's 94. Okay. This was a gentleman that at the age of 85 decided to have dental implants on the lower jaw. And he did great with it. All of a sudden, he could chew and talk and do whatever he wanted. He lost some teeth over the years, and at the age of 94, he showed up on my doorstep again and asked, said, Doc, can you help me out? So he planned to do implants, and he has a fixed prosthesis up there. And he's, uh, he's 94, which sounds old, but he still lives by himself, drives. You only go around once. Why do not? they say, I mean, what, do, does he say, I mean, what about pain for, for, the, for the older person? Is it tougher? Bigger downtime? Not if you plan things on the computer with m minimal incisions. So it's that easy. I mean, in a way, I mean, you make it sound very simple. But it is. It's a minor procedure compared to doing something like an open heart. But you dramatically change their life. So the models, I mean, other models, what, what do you have there? Because we're just about out of time. Well, this is a fixed appliance that the patient has multiple implants. In this case, there are five implants. So five dental implants. Five dental implants, and you're supporting a full arch of teeth. And this is something that's not taken in or out of their mouth. So you don't have to clean them. Uh, I guess still... you have to clean them, I mean, but with what, a water pick or yeah, something? Yeah, water type? pick and brush, a toothbrush. So it's easier, a lot easier than taking out your teeth at night yeah. and putting them in a jar and keeping them there So all they're the night. in there. They're in, They're in there. Oh, they don't come in or out. They're just secured by small screws. And the only patient, uh, the only person that takes these out is the dentist. How often do you go in for a cleaning? Uh, you go in for a cleaning, but you don't remove these more than once a year. If that, if everything's secure, there's no need to take anything out. So the teeth, can they look authentic? Because I always feel like I could spot dentures, uh, you know, 20 yards away. I mean, are, are, are these made of porcelain? Tell you me should, about that. Typically on the upper jaw, uh, if you really want a great aesthetic result, you'll place porcelain teeth. Okay. And the labs nowadays can make everything look lifelike. And then they can customize the, the gums to different characteristics, racial characteristics, so it looks tremendous. In the lower jaw, usually you place acrylic teeth, so that if one jaw is to wear out, it's going to be the lower jaw. So they just don't know their options, or else they would do it. You have to understand the psyche of a denture wearer. They've kind of reached, in their mind, the end of the line. They had teeth, they took them out, they had a denture that took care of the problem, but it really didn't take care of the problem because it opened up a whole can of worms. Now they can't chew and talk because the denture moves around. They All have right. pain when they chew. They, they just can't function like you and I can. So they don't know the alternatives that are available today. So nobody's suggesting it to them. If they're not going to the dentist, they're just getting, uh, I guess, relined dentures. And oftentimes, patients don't even do that. I have patients that I've seen in my office that have had dentures for 40 years, and they're the original dentures. They haven't even had a reline. But through the advice of a friend or seeing something on the media or a newspaper, they thought, well, maybe I should check it out. So in your area, okay, let's say New Hampshire, uh, how many people are wearing dentures out there, either upper or lower? What's, I mean, is it thousands? Oh, it's definitely thousands. Like 20,000, 50,000 people? I would say it's more in the range of close to 100,000 people. 100,000 people, and they just don't know that four implants, so I get this straight, four implants, you could give them something that does not come out in and out of their mouth. That's definitely true. And, and not just, stitches, no bone grafts. Give them a whole new lease on life. Not an exaggeration. It's not an exaggeration. I've seen the before and afters. You have people that are not confident, have low self-esteem because they're afraid that this denture is going to move, whether they're talking, chewing, kissing, whatever. And now it's secure in their mouth. They can chew whatever they want. Now, one category that we haven't talked much about is people that go to their dentist and they're told your teeth have to go. What about those people? Are, are their gums, I mean, healthy enough? Somebody said to me, Randy, my gums are no good. I can't get dental implants. My teeth, my teeth are loose. That's definitely not true. If you take out the teeth and you get rid of the inflammatory tissue, you've taken care of the problem of the chronic infections that they sustain when they have bad teeth. You can definitely place dental implants in and you can do it the same day as when you take out the teeth. Is that right? And if you're working with a dentist uh, skilled in the procedure, you can have a prosthesis placed the same day as when you take. So you walk out with teeth? Correct. Okay, so there's never p uh, really a period where they're without teeth? No, that doesn't have to be anymore, not in this okay. day and age. Okay. Now w w when you say things like uh, people hold on to their teeth too long. Elaborate on that. They experience bad breath. I'm sure you've spoken to somebody that yeah. they have their long in the tooth, so to speak, and it's creating constant infections. It's been proven that... So, the, so their dentist says, your teeth have to go. 
and they refuse to have them pulled? Is that what's going on? It's, it's fear. It's fear of the unknown, what's going to happen afterwards. They don't want to go to a denture. Yeah. Nope. That's associated with what? In, in our culture, age. Nobody wants to get old. And they're, they're afraid of lack of function. So that's why they hold on to their teeth. And what about the denture wearers that, that their teeth were so bad they were glad to get rid of their teeth? Because I hear that too. It was a relief to get rid of their dental problems. So they enjoy their denture. They enjoy it initially maybe because they weren't going to the dentist all the time afterwards, but soon they fell into the trap where they didn't have any okay, function. Okay, so eventually the, every denture wearer will end up unhappy. Is your, is Without your a doubt. And when they take, like I said, when they take those teeth out at night and go to bed and leave them in the denture cup, it's a real eye opener. Okay, then do, the, do you still hear people don't like the dentist? I mean, they'll tell you, oh, I, I, I hate dentists. Oh, they're, they're fearful of dentists. Do you because, hear that, by the way, where they say, well, I, I hate dentists? Without a doubt. Yeah, well, you hear, I hear that all, all the, time. the time. Do you they're, really? You still hear that? Yes, definitely. And that's one way in my office I get around that by sedating the patient and giving him general anesthesia because they're so fearful of the dentist. Now, uh, you have an interesting story. You have an MBA, but also uh, became a dentist. Why do you like being a dentist? Because I can help people. And it's interesting. The anatomy is interesting. The surgical procedures are fun. That's, that's why I enjoy it. But really, I can really make a big difference in somebody's life. Okay, final message to somebody watching this. They're a little bit skeptical or afraid of the dentist, of pain, expense, or maybe they think they're happy with the denture. What do you say to them? I mean, what's their first move? They first just come move, in, get some options? They can either contact us or they can contact their dentist and get a referral to us. But they shouldn't be hindered by worrying about pain or that they're not a candidate. Most patients, the vast, vast majority are candidates for these procedures. Okay, now what if somebody has osteoporosis? That's not a contraindication. Osteoporosis, osteopenia is not a contraindication. That's been proven. Okay, I talked to a doctor in California. He said, Randy, if they could, if they're healthy enough to get out of their car, walk to my office, I could probably get dental implants for them. That's, I mean, that's is, true. Is there truth to that? Yeah, there, there are very few contraindications, basically an uncontrolled diabetic or somebody on immunosuppressive therapy. Other than that, there, is, there aren't any contraindications. You okay, great. Well, good for you. Uh, very interesting, and we'll uh, have to have you back. So thank you so Thanks much. Thanks an awful lot, Randy. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.